guys. I would not hey, big brother. Uh, got your uh, you Texas Star Viking 3200 here. Okay. I had traced down two blown transistors in this two pill section. It took a good bit of uh, troubleshooting since my oscilloscope is broke. Um, so. <clears throat> Took a good, a good bit of troubleshooting, but I, I traced it down to here. I have not yet checked any of these other transistors. I'm hoping to God that's just these two. Um, there might be a possibility, an issue with the bias. I'm about to check the bias now. But, uh, just want to show you. Let's see if I can't maneuver this for you. Both of these transistors are blown equally. It's kind of weird. That's why I'm kind of worried about the bias. Usually, you're just going to blow a, a single transistor, usually not. And both of these are blown identically, too. It's showing a tad bit of opening from base to collector, which I'll show you now. Let me hook up everything here. And they're both, uh, they're both blown this way. Turned off anyway. I got the second one hooked up. See, same thing. But when I check it on a diode meter, <clears throat> that's when I see there's a little bit of voltage from base to collector, and they're both identical. So they both got blown identical. And uh, your, your bias dot, your bias resistor blew as well, which was kind of hard to see. It blew more up underneath, but I could tell once I got my headlamp and looked at it. But uh, I know those are the two resistors I sent you that you put on there. Probably gonna probably put you a three watt hundred ohm right there, man. Uh, all right, brother. Well, to be safe, I think I'm gonna check these. See, these two transistors beside it have been took out and put back in before. I can tell. And, um, and this transistor right here has. Well, it's pretty weird. I don't know why, but they're all the same lot transistors. Maybe there's been transistors blown before and somebody was able to replace them with the same lot. I don't know. But I'm going to have to remove these anyway. I need to try to find you a matching set that matches the rest of these. So either way, I'm going to have to pull these. It's hard to lift these legs up on Texas Stars and just check them in circuit. It really is hard. If they would honestly change the way their circuit is and, and put a little bit right here on their... Uh, on this portion right here to where there is no solder then you could lift the leg up you know away from the solder but it is almost impossible <laughs> to do it man with texas stars that's the only negative thing that's one of the negative thing about texas stars but other you know i love them there's just always a few things that i i feel they could change about them all right man trying to get this big mall working for you big brother it's a beautiful lamp, man. Ain't a lot of them out there. This is number 47. There wasn't many of these built, big brother. We'll try to get this uh, fixed here for you, man. Get it back on the uh, air. I got quite a few hours already in labor on this cotton picker, man, but we'll get her running for you. Might go bring mine out here and look at it a little bit, too, while I'm at it. Old gatekeeper said it. We'll be back. 
All right, man, we're back here with your uh, <clears throat> Texas Star DX 3200 Viking. With all the transistors removed except the uh, two ones that I've put in, replacing the two that were blown, which are these two right here. This one right here I couldn't remove. I got lucky enough to get all the solder around from the base and the emitter to check it in circuit. It had an HFV of 3. And as you can see, all the other ones have single digit HFEs. We got two 7s actually. The rest of them are pretty much are 4s, 5s, 3, 1, 3, 9 it looks like. But they're all single digits, so I mean this amp's had had its has had its use. <laughs> That's what uh, transistors look like when an amplifier has had its use, no doubt about it. Um, <clears throat> this transistor right here is done for. Its HFE is is zero and below. It's being read as a series diode network, so. That means I'm have to find two more transistors to go in. <sighs> mm -mm. I don't really, I don't have two Shivas laying around. I don't. They get used up so dang quick. So I'm having to remove them out of some personal equipment, which I hate to do. But it's the only thing, the only option I have at the moment. <laughs> I just want to get this thing working. I mean, we can remove the four transistors I put in if we have to, and you can you know do something whatever you want my main concern is to get the amplifier working so uh i'm about to go find me two more transistors and we're going to place these transistors back in here now that i know what state the transistors are in and i hated to remove them but i had no choice because these texas stars are tough lifting the leads uh leads up on them and getting the solder out from up under them it's tough sometimes you can do it sometimes you can't like i said if they would have just removed a little bit of the trace right here at the transistor on each one you could lift the legs up and get it away from the solder real easy to test them in circuit but i never have good luck doing that but anyway i noticed that no rf was making it over to this section right here and I have all the, le the le legs lifted up. As you can see right here. I have all the legs lifted up on all of the input transformers to make sure there's no short in the actual RF line because that will cause RF to not travel. And there is no short in the RF line. So I don't know what's up with that. I have no earthly idea what was up with that. Um, <laughs> I was hoping I was going to find a short, to be honest with you. Because I could trace the RF going to this side, to this combiner, and I could trace the RF going to, into every input transformer on this side. But the RF would not make it um, pretty much past this coax right here. So I lifted the leg up on that coax, then I could read the RF on the coax. So that just means it was something from this point this way that was keeping the RF from registering. So that's why I went ahead and checked for an RF short, a short somewhere in the RF line. Now, usually that that's what that's only going to, that, usually that's a short is going to cause the RF to not be able to register because there's a short. There's no way for the RF to dissipate through a short. <clears throat> and there are no capacitors that could be blown from on the RF line at that point. There's no input tuning. Um, so uh, I'm kind of clueless on that. I checked for any kind of shorts, you know, like I said, in the transformer. I even checked for any faulty 10 ohms that was shorting uh, anything out. Everything looks good, so I don't know what's up with that. Now I'm gonna put all the transistors back in here, and we're gonna go from there. If I have to, I'll check every dang tube pill section to see which ones are not working. Whew. 
when you, when you get into bigger boxes like this, you better go ahead and get ready for labor costs. That's all I got to say. I'm good and gone. Here we are back. This is uh, day number three, I believe. Three or four. I think it's three. Day number three of hardcore troubleshooting. And uh, you have to go do a little extra when your oscilloscope is broke. But anyway, um, as we know, we had uh, two blown transistors, one damaged transistor. This is a new set of transistors right here. They're used, they're a little bit higher HFE than all the other ones. And, uh, but that's just what I could find. <clears throat> because we're just trying to get this thing working. We'll figure out what we're going to do with the, this, these four transistors after I get it working. But anyway, the uh, issue was is the box still is not working, of course. So I've got to track down and figure out where the heck the issue is. And as you can see, there's, there's eight different boards where an issue could be. And as you can see right here at the main combiner, this whole eight pill section right here is not hooked up. The reason why this is not hooked up because I am getting output from this 8-pill section right here. I was not getting output from this 8-pill section right here. So then I had to keep stepping down, stepping down, getting closer to the root of the problem and troubleshooting. And uh, I was getting output from this 4-pill section. Fed through the whole box, meaning I'm bypassing the main com uh, combiner to main splitter just lifting the leg up this four pill section is working with the RF coming through the relay through the LC circuit right here all the way through this four pill section wasn't so at this point now it's now it's time to break down to each two pill section individually so that's just the way it's got to be done at this point when you don't have uh, other types of equipment, more advanced equipment to use. And this is how the uh, the old school guys had to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see, I got my uh, individual coaxes here to bypass the relay here, to bypass everything, go straight to the two pill sections. Each two pill section worked, and I was kind of hoping one of them didn't work. Because it'd make my job a little easier. I would know exactly where the issue is. If this two pill section didn't work, then I know something is wrong with this board, and I'm gonna have to figure it out. But they both worked. So then my it, my, my deal is okay. If they both work, that's cool and all, but the, they're not working together. So one last time, and I already done it, but meaning I already did the test and it failed. These did not work falling through the system without using these, going straight through the system, just lifting the leg up on this right here. So this section, this section is not hooked up. So I've done it again, just in case, maybe I fix something when I clean, cause I went, I went in here and cleaned all the flux off everything, as you can see. That is a clean section, very clean section. So I went ahead and cleaned the flux off, just make sure there ain't no solder pebblets or whatever, you know, shorten out the trace or something. And it still did not work. So I'm like, goodness gracious, what is going on here? So I'm like, well, the next thing after that is where I'm at now. So what I've done now is I'm like, okay, it's not working flowing through, meaning the RF comes in this direction. Let me get my little RF tracer right here so I can point. So this is my little RF tracer that I made. So I can actually trace the RF and I can tell when it stops. So all I got to do is sit here and ground it like that. And I can go get the tracing. And I've got the circuitry down right here. But anyway, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to use I'm just going to use this to point and show you the the flow so the RF comes in through this SO239 right here alright 
it flows through this piece of Teflon right here to this lead. When the relay is keyed, it goes to this lead right here. Okay, it goes down. I'll turn my light on my headlamps. Maybe that'll help. It goes down to this capacitor right here. This is just a filter capacitor, coupling capacitor. Through this capacitor in series, this trace right here. I ain't gonna, I'm going to turn the power off on the amplifier for I've touched something I don't need to touch. <laughs> Let's let that power down for a second so I can get in here and get nasty. So I won't short nothing out while I'm doing it. Alright, she's drained. Thanks for the bleeding ca bleeder capacitor. Alright. Right here. This is that same trace. It flows through. It flows through to right here. Follows this wire right here. Through this 5 ohm resistor. Some of them will have a 10 ohm. This is just a major high wattage padding resistor which is also used for heat indication too that gets too hot and you overdrive switch and we won't get into all that but anyway it flows to this resistor back down this way through this lc circuit okay through the inductor now here's your first splitter this is your main splitter for the whole 16 pill your signal from this point splits off this direction to this 8-pill section. Right here it splits off to this direction to this 8-pill section. And it splits off to this direction to this 8-pill section. This is your main number one splitter. Okay. So it comes this direction to this Teflon coax. To the next level of splitting. To your next splitter. Which I like to call the sub splitter. Alright, but we're focusing in this direction. It goes this direction. Now here's your splitter for your 8-pill board. So from this point, it's going to split the signal to this 4-pill section. To this 4-pill section. Alright. As you see now, what I have done is bypassed all the splitters and everything. I have this coax soldered directly to this splitter right here. So you've got, here's the levels of splitting. Number one splitter splits to both 16 pills, uh, both 8 pill sections. This splitter and this splitter splits off to both 4 pill sections of each one. Number one splitter, number two splitters. Then you have your number three splitter which splits off to each 2 pill section. Here each two pill section this is an old school way of splitting so what i've done is i've bypassed everything in this right here is soldered directly to this four pill splitter and i've got the output right here soldered directly to this output combiner this is so the same way that i just explained the splitting to you the combining is done the absolute exact way but now you're going from small up to the big like right, for example this is your main combiner all right, so now I've bypassed the splitters, all the splitting, and I'm going directly to this four pill section. So now the signal's going directly to this splitter, splits off to this two pill section, this two pill section. Then when it's combined after amplification, it goes to here. This two pill section, that two pill section is combined and goes to this coax out. Let's take a look at this. Power is on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I ain't going to do no more keying than that. I couldn't even key twice. But wow, the four pill section is working. The four pill section is working. So now I have got down right to the essence of the issue. And no, I don't know what it is yet. But I know that it has something to do from this splitter 
to this splitter. But keep in mind, the RF is working. The, the, the other sections are working, flowing through this network. This right here is a network. As far as I understand, it is an LC network. This right here is an LC network. I do not agree with this trimmer. Do not. I am going to remove that trimmer and mic it in once I get all this done and make sure it's tuned correctly. I do. That is probably the weakest point of the whole amplifier. I understand Texas Star designed this amplifier to be driven with probably about a one pill, a mod V or something, you know. But truthfully, it's a 16 pill. People are going to hit it with at least a two pill probably. And that means that whole two pill output, I understand this is in conjunction with this small DM15 over here, but still, no. They should have trimmed that out. I'm not telling Techstar what to do, but they really should have trimmed that out and after they tuned it and mic'd that in. Same way this right here's mic'd in. Um, I would have already checked that, but like I said, RF flowing through everything, this section's working while flowing through everything. So it looks like that I have literally got this down to the essence of the issue. So it has to be from here that this splitter, okay, in between this splitter and this output of this splitter. So yeah, that's one, two, three. So the problem is somewhere right here. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and ease these on up and keep going up because right now when I'm tra when I'm when I'm tra tracing the RF I won't do it because I ain't got nothing to hold the phone with and I ain't, I ain't going to play around with that I can tr I can trace the RF all the way through right now I can trace all the RF all the way to right here okay but like I said, when this right here is, you see this wire right here, this right here has this four pill section unhooked from this main component right here, okay? RF flows through this splitter and goes throughout this port over and then and this works. RF goes through the same port to get to here and this doesn't work. So I don't see the issue being right here. I see the issue being from here to here, somewhere. If something is up with one of these splitters, I don't know if we got a short somewhere up under the board, but I tell you what, I'm about to find out. I'm about to lift every leg up on these splitters, and I'm gonna find me, I want to guess, I'll take a wild guess, that we've got us a short up under the board. It's just a wild guess, but we'll see soon. We'll be back. Look what I found, man. Goodness gracious, I spent some hours on this thing. The uh, loading cap, one of the loading cap output caps for this 8 pill section, which sits right where that was. I don't know the value right off of hand. I'll have to look on the schematics, but we have a shorted metal mica cap. I'm going to hold the uh, phone with my neck here and just show. Hear that continuity beat? So we have a shorted... I'm let this thing focus, man. You can see my pretty legs in the picture. <laughs> there she is right there. Wow. I, I have not found many of these caps short, but they will short. And I guarantee that's probably what took these two transistors out as well. On that side. And this thing was probably on its way to shorting, getting close to it. And it could possibly, I ain't saying 100%, but possibly could have something to do with uh, all the other transistors being so weak. I'm not saying 100%. That's just a very, very rough estimated guess. 
Now let's just hope to God <laughs> that I don't have an issue with this one right here. Usually when you have something like this happen, usually it's just going to be that one capacitor. So I'm going to go uh, figure out what value this is and look through my Texas Star jump pile. See if I can't find a brand new metal, this exact value. I might be able to bend this leg back right here and see what value it is. Let me see here. And it's soldered down. Give me a second. Oh, that's hot. God. Oh, that's hot. Son! I just burnt the snot out of myself, man. Goodness gracious, that hurt. Wee! <laughs> One second, y'all. The sacrifices I make. <laughs> All right, this is a. That dog it. Right, now I can't tell if it's a 50 or a 150. It is a 50. 50 Pico Farad. I definitely got some 50s, but I want to go see if I can find this exact cap in my Texas Star Jump Pile. Get me a brand new one just like that. They're basically bending those over and sitting the... Uh, Sitting the uh, coax on it, but I'm gonna try to put it back exactly the way as you see, like with this one right here. There's a little lip that comes up on that metal, and they've got the coax soldered to that lip, and that lip's connected to the case of it, so it's grounded. So they got it set up like that, all nice and neat looking, like that. So, got us, got us a. Uh, and basically for this to happen, I'll go ahead and explain. All this is is a, a silver plated material, okay? You see these little sheets of mica? Those are sheets of mica. Little things you can bend them in half and they'll break. It's the same things we use as insulators under finals and radios, okay? So you basically have little plates of... Uh, of uh, copper usually or some metallic material in this in and have a mica sheet under each on one end of it connects to the case right here on one end of the uh copper or whatever metallic plates and on the other end will connect to this lead right here so then you have multiple layers of plates that are insulated using the mica and then you'll have yourself a capacitor and for it to damage it's got to basically exceed its rating or get so hot that it ex uh, exceeds its uh, temperature coefficient or whatever and will actually burn through that mica and short out one of them plates and that's how it shorts and that's why you get a dead short from one end to the other all right, we'll be back. Goodness gracious. I thought I'd do this just for uh, educational purposes. <laughs> so here's the 50 Pico Farad metal capacitor. Metal mica. Silver plated metal mica capacitor here. And as you see, here's your plates attached to the mica. You see that right there? See that right there on both the plates? That right there happened to the metal and basically shorted the plates together. I mean, it, don't, it only has to be shorted just a, enough to make continuity for that cap to blow. See, there's the, there's just, that's just the casing, which is part of the connection. Um, that become, that's one of the leads for one end. And like I said, and this and this will be the connection for the other end of the plates. 
And then, of course, that's used to basically become part of the connection, but also so that they are pushed together. But there you go, man. That's how it happens. And I've took these apart a few times. Like I said, I've, I've probably only had this happen maybe two times, two or three times I can remember. The last time I can remember was on the back of a dang uh, uh, four pill Dave made. And uh, maybe like a two transistor amp, I believe. Nothing real, you know, you don't usually use them. They've got them basically scattered upon, you know, equaling out the load, equaling out the voltage and current of, of these metals on this deal. The way we do it is we just use one big whopping tuning capacitor, you know what I'm saying? They've got it broke up in this Texas Star to where you got one here, here, and then there. So you've got it all together, you know, e you know, kind of dividing the, the, <coughs> the load to all of them. All right, let me go see if I can find one of these 50 Pico Fair. I know I got one. I'll be back. Well, looky what I found. And I hope that's the only one, too, because <laughs> that's the last one I got, which ain't a big deal. I got 50 uh, Pico Fair caps in uh, just a different form. Ain't no big deal. But to make it still look genuine the way it would straight from Texas Star, I'm glad I got another one of these. So I'm going to figure out which of these legs are connected to the case. And I'm going to bend it upward and let the uh, the ground of the coax, the shield of it, sit on it. All right. Dang, look at all them metals, boy. It's good to have a good gang of metals. You never know when you might need one. All right. You catch this and we'll, go. we'll be gone. All righty. We'll take a look at this. We have output. All right. Just hitting it with a little one pill with four watts going into the one pill. Thousand watts load. Load. We'll get about a 400 bird. PP. Load. Of course, that's off the scale. All right. I'm just showing output. This ain't the final. Test. I got to put all the feedback resistors. This has no three, uh, no collector to ground uh, capacitors on it. Some of these are a lot different values than others. I found one that was like 312, while the other one was 340. I'm gonna go go to my uh, Texas Star bag and and match up uh, 16. 330s. That should take a second. <laughs> nah, it won't take too long. Well, it might take a second. Higher up in value you go with capacitors, the longer it takes to match. Uh, you ain't got to get too close. You know, I'll get within 10% and let it be that. And I'll get all these put back on here, all the feedback, and then we'll do some power test. We'll get the two pill 1446 driver. And we'll try a few different radios and see what this puppy's going to do. I will admit it was an extensive labor repair. And it was a multi-level uh, multi issue repair. It wasn't just one thing that was wrong. And sometimes that happens like that, man. One problem can cause a chain reaction of more issues. Old gatekeeper said it. We'll be back. Got all the uh, capacitors matched here that I'm going to use. I think I matched a few, one or a uh, few, few too many. But that's fine. This little another. Put that in a small bag and put it back in here. I probably can put that in a sweet 16 or something. But all right, man, I'm gonna go ahead and get these tinned up for you, man. Get them put in the circuit. Get the feedbacks in, and we'll go ahead and do some tests, some output tests. All righty. Well, here we are. All done. All right, y'all gonna have to bear with me too. I do not honestly know if I have enough power supply for this beast right here. We're running off the old black supply right here. This right here is actually a 16 pill base armadillo. And it's got a supply down in the bottom of it. I don't know if it pick up really good. It's kind of dark. Yeah, it's too dark. 
But anyway, this is a little unique supply. This supply really ain't big enough for this box right here that's built into this thing, if you ask my personal opinion. Um, it, it's, it's built with two low volt transformers. The duty cycle, duty voltage cycle, these transformers are supposed to be a little bit over 100 amps each, but they're 12 volt transformers, so all this thing's gonna do is pull that voltage down to a low voltage so I just like to say that before we do these tests you're gonna get a little bit higher numbers on an adequate power supply I suggest at least putting this on at least a 400 amp supply so you can have a little extra play around with plus it's AB biased you got bias voltage so that's gonna pull a little bit more current <clears throat> but uh, I'll yield the results that I can with the supply that I have so let's get started. All right, I was using the one pill driver during the test. And uh, so now that we're done and finally got this puppy fixed, man, it was a little bit of a journey, but we got it done. Texas Star DX3200 Viking, number 47. I looked in there in the, earlier and I own I think number 100 and something. I, th I might bring it out here in a little bit and key it up. I had never even keyed up mine. Yeah, mine's got some, a uh, little bit of work needs done, just some touch up work. But all right, we got the two pill, two 1446s. That's all we're gonna drive into this thing. I ain't gonna put a five pill in it or a three pill or anything, anything like that. We're just gonna use two 1446s. Only enough I've ever shown them. There they are in there. Two 1446s, okay. We got the bench radio hooked up, which is four watts RMS. It's peaking about 18 to 20 watts peak. And that gives us Dude. 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 what's this thing talking though? What's that thing talking about uh 60 to 80 watts? So about 60 to 80 watts RMS. All right, let's kick on the supply. You can hear these big clopping relays clicking in. Sounds like a dang hammer hitting. All right, we're floating over here at 18.5. Oh, you see that? 18.5, maybe I should have this voltmeter a little closer. Y'all just have to, here, let me see if I can move this a little closer. There we go. 18.5. All right, we'll see what it yields for us. 1,000 watt slug, reading the bottom scale. Come on now, man. Oh, oh. Almost 800 bird, right there at 800. The bolt drop, no, 14.4 already. Just hitting it with the bench radio. I'm not even gonna put that on peak. We're gonna go ahead and change the slugger right now. Let's reach over here and find me. The bolt meter just fell. 2,500, there we go. 2,500 watt slug. Let's go ahead and check the peak at this level. Alright, we got 2500 watt slug put in. We're going to be reading the top scale. For the 10, that's 1000. The 15 is uh, 1500 and so on. Alright, we'll turn the peak on. Let's see what we're doing peak. By the way, the driver is on 14.4. Three, actually it's on 13, not 3.8 volts the driver is. I thought it was a little bit higher, but that's fine. We'll work with that. All right, this is peak on the 1500 watt, uh, 2500 watt slug, sorry. I ain't got no line over here is what the problem is. Dang. That's 2500 watts in the corner. So it's already doing 2500. Dang. In the corner. 2,500 watts, all right. 
I'm going to take that slug out then. I didn't know it was going to be doing 2,500 already. So we're already real close to that DX3200 mark. I can't remember exactly what. Well, I'll tell you like this right here. They claimed, Texas Star claims, with a 4-watt dead key, you should be able to dead key 300... In 50 watts, P, uh, excuse me, I said that completely wrong. With 4 watts drive, I don't know what I'm talking about. 4 watts drive, this is what they claim. 4 watts drive, a 350 should be able to do 350 watts PEP. 667, 667 watts with 4 watts drive. I can't remember exactly which volts that is, so you can just kind of add that per board. 4 times 8. 4 times 8 is 28, correct? Correct? No, it's 32. 32. <laughs> My math's completely wrong. Anyway, that's right. Four times eight is 32. So you should be able to hit this thing with 32 bird. 32 watts drive. I'm not saying this is 100%. I'm just saying if you go by what they say. Um, Thirty-two hundred watts. I mean, that don't sound right to me, but I'm just saying in theory... If you wanted to go by that, 4 watts in, a 350 gives you 350 watts peak. But see, a 667, 4 watts in, that's going through the driver. So, I don't know. Just forget I said anything. How about that? All right. <laughs> I'm just theorizing here while I'm recording, which I shouldn't be. All right. Let me press pause here and hook up the hot radio, and I'm going to introduce something new to the arsenal, which is my hot, hot radio. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to introduce a new radio into the arsenal. I probably shouldn't hit it with this either, but we'll wait and see what the hot radio yields. Give me one second. Alrighty. We're uh, getting close to topping out the power supply now. I apologize for that. I'm going to be doing whatever I got to to get a bigger power supply here. I've I just been so backed up, I hadn't had time to build me one. I got a guy that's uh, that's going to be building me one <laughs> since I don't have time. Because right about now, I need me a good power supply. I can keep it about 14.5, 15 volts for this uh, demonstration. So just keep that in mind. The box will be doing a little bit more once it's on an adequate supply. Because now we are dropping it down to 13.8, 14 volts. Ooh. That is giving us. Ooh, right there, about 1300. I would say 1350, but it's right there, about 1300 bird. So we're right up under about 300 watts uh, uh, per 100 per transistor. But if I remember correctly, I think they, Texas Star, still ask you to not drive no more than. I want to say 250 watts peak into this box, if I can remember correctly. I could be wrong. I've got to pull up some of my old papers. But, uh, I don't know. The peak might not, honestly, might not have came up a whole lot. Oh, well, dang, I usually can take my slug out with one hand, but my, it's like my trick, uh, my, my little mechanism is, is all of a sudden working and it's never worked on this i like to just be able to reach down there in one hand and pull a slug out y'all well, give me a second okay it might not be doing much more peak man because a lot of times this radio right here won't show much more peak This is a, more of an RMS radio stick man modified. Alright, we're on the 5,000 watt slugs. We're looking at the middle. And see, another thing is, too, now that this thing's being driven harder, since we're on an unregulated supply now, the voltage is dropping more. So it kind of evens things out to where you're getting a little less wattage because of the voltage drop. That's why regulated supplies really are the best way to go. They really are. What is that? Let's 
it's like a little under 2,500 watts. You see, we was getting we was getting 20 over 2,500 before the bolts dropped right there at 14 volts. But anyway, I'm going to introduce, and I'm only going to be doing one key when I do this. I need to press stop now because I'm about to run out of space. So I'll be right back to hook up the uh, hot hot radio. All right, I got to hurry up really fast. All right, this is the new radio in the arsenal. This jugger right here is bad to the bone. I'll be doing another video actually showing what what the output of this radio is. Um, the output of it by itself can get all the way up to 19, 18 to 19 bird. 18 to 19 bird. Right now, I checked it and going through everything to the meter, it's only doing about 14 or 15 right now, going through all these jumpers and everything. <clears throat> but it's a step up now we're driving pretty much 14 15 bird into the two 14 46s now keep in mind now just remember we're only driving this uh 16 pill 3200 with two 14 46s two 14 not two 28 79s two 14 46s so these these numbers are pretty decent for not having a good supply pretty much like a 200 amp supply and the volts is already down 13 volts now. I got to hurry up because I'm about to run out of time. We got 30, 40 seconds. All right, 2,500 watt slug. Showing the RMS, 2,500 watt slug. I don't think I'm gonna have time, but it's doing right there at uh, 3,000 watts, a tad bit under 3,000 watts, like 2,950. Just so you'll know, because I ain't gonna have time to show that. All right, RMS, focus, focus, 2,500 watt, focus. Oh, let's turn the box on. <laughs> Boy, we got it, baby. 1600 bird. 100 per pill. What's it dropping to? 13.5. 13.5. I told you it was going.